Today on the Scott Thompson Show on 900 CHML. I find this next topic fascinating because we have a relatively new dog in the house. Um, six months? Five months? Six months? Something like that. Uh, and oddly enough, we have kids too. Now, they're a bit older. Uh, uh, 12 and... Oh, I'm testing myself. 12 and 17. So uh, we're past the raising of the, you know, young chitlins sort of thing. But, you know, teenagers, they can be pretty much the same. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, concern and perhaps even public outcry over a public television network uh, show in the United Kingdom. It's facing backlash for recently airing a documentary called Train Your Baby Like a Dog. Um, the series on Channel 4 features two sets of parents who struggle to control their young children's behavior. Enter in the animal behavioralist who recommends using dog training methods like encouraging good behavior with treats. Oh, that's a great idea. Bring food into it. Uh, although I'd rather use the device myself. Uh, you do what you're supposed to do or I'm taking the device. But maybe that's, you know, a different story for kids that are... Um, you know, just toddlers. Uh, if everyone, she says, if everyone parented their child the same way, we're training dogs, we'd end up with a much more caring and compassionate human being. Well, that sounds great. Um, but, you know, maybe it's clarity. We're just not getting the clarity here. Uh, let's bring in Dr. Dina Kolek, uh, Kolek uh, pediatrician and founder of Kid Crew, Kids Health Blog. You can find it at uh, drdina.ca and she is with us now. Dina, thanks for the time. Much appreciated. You're very welcome. Uh, is uh, uh, disciplining or raising your child similar to training a puppy? It's a funny question, actually. Um, in some ways, yes, and in many ways, no. You know, this I felt the same thing, way. I thought this yeah. wasn't a slam dunk, but I can see yeah. similarities here. Go ahead. There is some, yeah. So, you know, what I do recommend in terms of training toddlers and training children in general would be, you know, lots of positive reinforcement of positive behavior, being consistent, you know, responding consistently. Um, when your child does X, you should do Y, and you should, and the other caregiver should, and daycare provider should, you know, just being really consistent with the response to positive and negative behavior. And that would be similar to training a dog as well. I, I have four children and I have two dogs. And there are, there are similarities, right? If your dog does something positively, you say, good job, you know, thanks for being so great. And you would do the same for your kid. But when a dog misbehaves, you often will do something that's, you know, um, negatively reinforcing them or, you know, taking away something from them or putting them in their crate or, you know, you know m many dog owners will kind of, you know, bop them on the nose or something, and I, I certainly would not be recommending yeah. that. You shouldn't um, be. You, you know, shouldn't be. Rearing. You shouldn't be using a newspaper to discipline your child in other ways. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And you know, a lot of us raise our voices at dogs, or you know, we're more likely to yell at them. And I, I wouldn't recommend that either. You know, a dog is not the same brain as a human, right? Yeah. They learn differently. Similarly, using clickers or reinforcing with treats that I don't think is a positive thing. You know, I don't want kids to learn that they get rewarded with sugar or candy or or whatnot when they have positive behavior because. I want them to have a healthy relationship with food, and certainly kids should have an opportunity to have those things, but not just because they were, you know, particularly well behaved that day. I just, I, I'm always cautious around food um, with kids and, and reinforcing uh, with food alone. So I think the big thing with with children is to focus on reinforcing positive behavior, being very consistent, being predictable, and also to focus on communicating with them, teaching them to express themselves. Right? If a child does a temper tantrum. A lot of parents I find kind of jump in and they give them cuddles and they say, it's okay, it's okay. Me personally, I take a different approach where I basically ignore the crazy behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, if they have a temper tantrum, I let them do that. You know, that's them getting their anxiety out or their stress out. Mm -hmm. And then when they calm down, that's when I give them lots of attention because I'm rewarding them for calming themselves. You know, you got your ickies out, yeah. just like an adult might you know, yell into a pillow or yeah. go for a run to get that nervous energy out. Kids can do the same, and that's very age-appropriate and developmentally appropriate. But then I reward them for calming down. So now, good for you. Now you're expressing yourself. So this a positive behavior. So the similarities are in the positive, constructive uh, dialogue and behavior, but where it's different is the method of execution, how you're doing it. Exactly right. That's right. 
So um, let's talk about this. Uh, we've broken down into some issues here. You talked about food. Uh, I could see this immediately throwing up red flags for a lot of people considering the chatter around kids and obesity. Is it yeah. right to reward your kids with food? Yeah, I feel uncomfortable about this. And, and we know from, from good evidence, good research, that rewarding for food with food is not the best of ideas. You know, I really want kids to enjoy eating all sorts of foods, right? Which is why I recommend eating as a family, you know, having mealtime as a social experience when you could talk about your day and, and parents and, and families and kids enjoying that time together. I, I see a lot of like, okay, well, if you eat your broccoli, then you can get cake. Or, you know, if you eat this protein, then you can get X, Y, and Z. And I, but I want kids to learn to like those foods as well and not being this battle or this, you know, this, um, this uncomfortable situation for families around mealtimes. And I find the more social you make it, the more fun you make it, the more kids will eat a variety of things and not need to be, you know, rewarded only with the food, right? Um, but also not to be too restrictive, because if we're so restrictive around um, snack kind of foods, then kids often, you know, obsess over it, gorge on it. You know, kids go to birthday parties and go crazy yeah. for all the candies and the sweets. So there's, there's a time and a place, but I don't think, I mean, I don't typically recommend it as a reward-based um, uh, plan. What about the use of a clicker? I don't think I've really even seen this with pets, but I guess that some people use them. That's to get the pet's attention? Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's their, you know, nonverbal but noise, you know. Like a whistle, right? like whistling at somebody. Like, like, like a yeah, whistle, right? Yeah. But like, I don't think you should be whistling at your children or using clicker yeah. or snapping when they do something good. You know, use your praise, use your words. I mean, kids don't like anything any more than, you know, good job, Johnny. Like, you did such good job. You know, thanks for communicating well. You know, thank you for eating well. Thank you for sleeping well. They want to feel um, empowered and motivated with your own words. So to use something like a snap or a clicker, you know, use your words and they'll use their words. And then you're going to be enforcing positive behavior with speech. Would a whistle like a referee's whistle, would that be similar to a, uh, a clicker in a room? Like if you've got a, a, a parent or a teacher that uses a whistle to get everybody's attention? Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing, I guess, but that, yeah. that wouldn't be my strategy. You know, I, I do something with my own children. My youngest is almost two, so he's in this, you know, terrible two kind of behavior uh, pattern. Um, I say what I call eyes to eyes. So I think a lot of times parents will raise their voice or they'll yell or they'll clap or they'll stamp their feet or they'll make a lot of noise to get attention. But rather, I find kids get a lot um, more focused with you if you look at them. Mm. So in the moment, instead of screaming and yelling or stomping or hitting or whatever, I, go, I say eyes to eyes. I look at my child in the eyes and then I express myself with the words. Yeah. And just that two seconds of eyes to eyes, I find makes a dramatic difference in terms of you know, turning your child's emotions around and having them focus back on you so that you can express yourself because you want them to express themselves. Let's have a mm. conversation here. And we could best have a conversation when we're facing each other eye to eye. One of my kids had a teacher that blew a whistle in the classroom, and that drove me nuts. And because it scared the bejeebers out of the kids. Like, you know, just yeah. say calm down or whatever. They're noisy. Kids get noisy. But th these aren't small kids. These are kids approaching adolescence. And I just thought, wow, it's a little over the top. But this is sort it's of the a, same. It's an interesting strategy. It is. It is an interesting strategy. Uh, and, and I'm sure one that, that many parents had with the principal. Uh, but we'll move on from that. Uh, what can you take from your pet? When it comes to your kids, what what you talked about the positive reinforcement, or, or do we don't even draw, should we even should we not even draw this comparison at all? I think only as much as the you know positive reinforcement being very predictable, being very consistent. You know, if a, if a dog learns that you know with one family member they can steal food off your plate, and another family member you know bops them on the nose, they're going to continue to steal food off of people's plates because they don't know any better. They think sometimes I get food when um, I steal from the plate, right? Yeah, so they, I liken this. I, I say this example to families of toddlers all the time. If you have a dog and your dog pees on the sofa, and sometimes when the dog pees on the sofa, you give them a treat. And sometimes the dog pees on the sofa and they get smacked in the nose. Yeah. Are they going to keep peeing on the sofa? Hmm. Absolutely, they will because it's inconsistent. Sometimes they get rewarded, so it's worth the risk. And the same would be true for parenting of toddlers and older children if they get rewarded sometimes by negative behavior, they will keep doing that negative behavior. So if your child has a temper tantrum, doesn't want to eat dinner, and then you give them a candy because mm. you think they're hungry and you're worried about them going to bed hungry, they're going to probably keep having more temper tantrums because sometimes they get rewarded for that. So it's all about being very consistent and predictable. 
the child does X, you do Y. And not just you, but every caregiver that takes care of that child. So the child knows if I do this behavior, this is going to be the outcome. And that's how you get the best behaviors out of your children. Dr. Dina Kulik has been with us, pedi- uh, pediatrician and founder of Kid Crew, a kid's health blog. You can find it at drdina.ca. Dina, thank you so much for the time and insight. Much appreciated. Thank you. The Scott Thompson Show, weekdays from noon to 3 on 900 CHML.